guys, welcome back to world.com. I'm Michaela and today I'm going to be showing you how to make an infinity cube. You can make this cube out of any material you like, depending on how heavy you want the cube. You can also make it out of any size box section, but the bigger the box section, the bigger the cube. So my first step is to put a 45 degree angle on the end of the box section. My box section I'm using is 50 millimetres. Now you times that by 8 to get part A, which is 400 millimetres. And I'm going to measure the 400 millimetres from the point and it's going to go to the other point of 45 degrees. So as you can see, I've marked out the 400 millimetres and this is where I'm going to cut. Now I'm going to check the measurement and check the angle I've just cut. Perfect, so that's part A done. Now we're going to need 12 of those. Now for part B and part C. Now these can be a little bit confusing because firstly one end is exactly the same but the other end is an opposite hand. So for cutting part B and C you can use the end that you've just cut for your part A's. So for a part B we're going to be turning the box section so the point is facing down which is the way it wasn't cut on the saw. So part B, the two angles are going opposite ways, but you've got to ensure that part B is one hand and part C is the other hand. So for me, my part B's and part C's are 300 millimetres, and how I've worked that out is 50 millimetres, which is the size of my box section, times six. <laughs> So this is my part B. As you can see, one end is different to the other. Now the measurement goes from the longest points and that goes for all the parts that I'm making today. Now we've got to make sure that C is the other hand to this. You have to be careful when you cut B and C as they look very similar. One end is exactly the same but the other is cut at different hands. So here we have parts A, B and C. We're going to need 12 of part A, 3 of part B and 3 of part C. Now the measurements for these depend on the size box section that you are using. So for me my box section is 50mm. I'm going to times this by 8 which gives me 400mm which is what it is from the longest point to the longest point. For part B and part C you're going to times your box section by 6. So for me, this is 50 millimetres times by 6, which equals 300 millimetres. You can see B and C are quite similar. They have one end the same, but the other end is the opposite hand. So here I have my 12 part A's, my 3 part B's, and my 3 part C's. After cutting all the bits I need on the saw, I'm going to debare them so they go together nicely. This is the TIG machine I'm using today, and as I'm welding aluminium, I'm using a zirconiated tungsten and aluminium filler rod, which is 4043. I'm using a foot pedal on this machine, and I'm going up to 160 amps. So the first thing I'm going to be welding is the A's. Now these go together at 90 degrees. All of the welds I do today are 90 degrees, and I'm going to be checking these every step of the way with an engineer's square. So this is how the A's are going together using my square to check their 90 degrees. Once I'm happy with where they are, I'm going to use some G clamps to clamp them in place. So I'm going to tack them first to make sure they're square and then I will weld them. Once I'm happy with them tacked and they're square, I'm going to go ahead and fully weld it. I leave the 
fillet weld on the inside till last, just so I can check that it's square the whole way throughout welding it. So with the 12 part A's, I'm going to create six of these. Sometimes you may need to whack it with a hammer to get it square. I'm making my infinity cube out of aluminium. I'm using a TIG machine for this as it's a little bit more precise and a little less messy than TIG. I'm using it on an AC setting with a 2.4 zirconiated white tip tungsten and a 2.4 aluminium silicon 4043 filler rod. And I'm using pure argon shielding gas. So here I have all my A's fully welded together at 90 degrees. So on three of the part A's you've just welded together, you're going to add a part B and a part C just like this, making sure these ends are the same way. So these angles are also 90 degrees. So I'm going to tack them together again, making sure they're 90 degrees square before I weld them. So that's my part B added, I'm going to add a C to the other side, making sure the ends are the same direction.
this is what it should look like when you've added a part B and a part C to the two A's. I'm going to do this to two others now. So there's three just plain A's and then there's three with part B's and part C's on. This is what all your welded pieces should look like. I'm autogenously tapping them on there, which means using no filler. They're at cut at 45, so they should be about 90 degrees tacking them together. But I check it, double check it with a square. So now we've got all the parts welded together, we're now ready to assemble the Infinity Cube. So I'm welding the A, A, B and C to just an A, A making sure it's still 90 degrees. So I'm now going to add another AA to the other side. So I'm just going to tack them without filler on there, as they cut at 45 degrees, so they should be at roughly 90. So this is what the first part of your infinity cube should look like. After the infinity cube is fully welded, I then go around with an engineer square checking all the angles are 90 degrees, and if they're not, I use a mallet. This is what the infinity cube looks like fully welded and finished. All angles are 90 degrees and everywhere is fully welded. So after I've fully welded the cube, I like to clean these and then take them down the paint shop as they look really good painted. Right guys, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you do make any Infinity Cubes, be sure to tag my Instagram as I'd love to see them.